Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a quite special and peculiar phono preamp. Let's take a look. Okay guys, so today we're gonna take a look at this baby, the SPL Phonos, which I had the pleasure to have in my system for quite a bit now. I would say five or six months, which is plenty of time to understand perfectly how this little baby behaves. You ready? Let's get to it. So this particular phono preamplifier has become quite popular. I mean, if you roam around in the different uh, top tens or things like that, popular phono stages, phono preamps, you're likely gonna find a SPL phonos. Things now are changing because new models are coming out, but I would say like a year ago, it, it was really busting out there. I mean, it was in, in, everywhere. Nevertheless, all of a sudden, it is starting to, a little bit to disappear. And as I see, for example, on YouTube, there's practically nothing on this. And it's strange because it is a, a, an exceptional piece of gear. It does have some downsides. We're going to talk about that all, obviously, but also has some very positive sides. And his siblings, like for example, the Phonitor or other products from SPL are very popular and there are dozens of videos. So here I am to, to try to solve that. Okay, so this product, like the other products coming from SPL, are mainly conceived in the professional environment. So we're not talking of normal hi-fi consumer or semi-pro or things like that. No, all their products are intended for a professional domain. So sound engineers, uh, sound techs, uh, mastering labs, anything that comes to your mind. And this little baby is very, very simple, very direct. Now, this is something I like. I mean, it's you can understand in a, at a glance what are the commands, how it works. Very, very easy. So as you can see, we have just two no simple knobs for the capacitance and the impedance, respectively for the moving magnet and moving coil type of cartridges. Very simple. We do have some selections. You can decide which one to choose. Not that many as other models where you can completely customize the, the load. But again, this is more than sufficient in my, in my experience. Here we have the gain, which we will talk about in a second, on and off the subsonic filter in order to reduce the rumble that may become evident for in the lower notes, lower frequencies on your turntable, and obviously the on and off button. Let's take a quick look behind. Very simple, on and off main button, detachable plug, very cool. You can also change the voltage if you want. You just have to switch the, the um, this part inside, reverse it, and put different kinds of fuses. And input, output, and ground. That's it. Simple dimple. Now, what is the peculiar aspects of this phone stage. Then I'll give you my take, I'll give you my judgment. Now, I must admit that this is one of the most powerful, dynamic, explosive, I would say, phono preamps out there. I mean, it is truly amazing. In fact, it relies certainly on a generous power part. I mean, they have, there's a nice big toroidal, a lot of capacitors. You have all the juice there in order to feed the rest of the, of the circuits. But there is this special, as you can see here, the Voltaire, which is, it's, it's able to feed 120 volts, they say, the circuits, which usually is re greatly reduced in, in, in other types of circuits, in normal phono stages, which goes around 30. So, if you have, according to them, and hypothetically, I would say, 
because numbers are numbers and real facts, as you know, I think is something else. According to them, if you have that power, which does make sense, actually, you have more headroom. You have more dynamic range. Obviously, you have all the necessary power to enhance, to obviously amplify in the correct way that very subtle and weak signal coming from your phono cartridges. In fact, I would recommend this mainly, actually, for low output MC cartridges. I mean, that's really what they I, what they had in mind, I think. In fact, I do have a low output MC cartridge. I would also add, and this uh, it's already starting to lurk in my opinions, obviously, because I'm sure, well, I'm not sure, I did try also on a moving magnet, but then the, the gain is so much, I mean, it's overwhelming. In fact, this reaches all the way up to 50, db for moving magnets cartridges and 71.5 db for moving coil that's a lot in fact i highly recommend to use the normal not the normal phase normal stage of the of the knob i would not decrease or increase that because then it becomes too suffocated if you take away a little those 10 db or too strong really too strong if you add those extra four but in any case this is already starting to be my judgment. The output, the sound is really, really powerful. So you have to bear that in mind. Like for example, if you have sensitive speakers, I don't think that's a, a great combination, a great matching, because the sound is so strong and up forward. Like for example, I was trying to record some vinyl and the levels were all the way on the right. I mean, you, you could almost couldn't bring them down they were so strong, even at the uh, at the reduced gain. So this baby is really a, a, a horse working all of his power, and, and you have to take this, bear this in mind, obviously, because not everyone wants that kind of power. In fact, I just had to turn the volume knob a few dials to have the, the, a good volume in, in my room. Usually, I would go halfway if I want nice, big, fat, booming audio. No, guys, with this guy, you just need one quarter of that. So obviously, there is some downsides in that, because if you're already starting at that high level, if you increase, you start, I think, to introduce some artifacts in the sound and the reproduction. Uh, but who wants to listen so much loud noise? I mean, loud music, practically nobody. And again, it depends what you pair with this. I tried it with two types of loud, loudspeakers, my SCM35 by ATC, and obviously my new speakers from Golden Ear. And the results, I must say, were much better actually with my ATC, SCM35, because it was much less efficient than these guys. In any case, if you have the right setup, if you have the right cartridge, I think it is something to try, to try to audition at least, because I never heard anything else similar to this, actually. Okay, I want to also talk about the equalization part of this phono stage, dedicated, obviously, to the RIA curve. Now, they have decided a very peculiar type of solution based on the recommendations on the design of Douglas Self, who is a renowned engineer. And what is their solution? They implement several, a lot, and small type of audiophile grade capacitors instead of just a few and large ones, which are something typical. Why is that? According to them, they, and it makes sense actually, they are more reactive, hence more effective, hence more precise and detailed in recreating this and obviously reversing the RIA curve, uh, which every record has. And I must say that they have indeed achieved pretty good results in that sense. Now, I must also make a side note on the burning in factor. If those of you who are following me saw my room tour 2.0, 2.0, the second one, I mentioned that me and uh, Tony Galli, uh, one of my circuit subscribers, we were talking about this and also had uh, other emails and messages with other people who had this. 
And, uh, for example, a few of them got rid of this right away. Now, you have to be patient. It took a lot of time to finally find its working point, its harmonious working point. Because in the beginning, with all this power, the sound was harsh. But you could hear that dynamic range. You could hear that quality, that finesse. Because having all that energy, you had no problem in delivering anything that was on those records. But it was harsh. I mean, it really had to loosen up. And it did. It, 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 it did took like, really, I'm not joking, I would say two months at least, even more maybe. And the sound after that, after that period of burning in was very, very good. I liked it a lot. Though, now that I changed my speakers, I'm not that sure anymore. In fact, I already changed it. I'm not going to tell you what I got. Future video. But I did want to make a video before saying goodbye to this guy. And since now I've decided to uh, invent my own evaluation, my assessment, I have my badges. And out of five badges, which is the top one is gold, and the, 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 less, the lesser one is metal, just normal iron, I would say we're in the silver area. Because this was very, very good, a good product. Okay, guys. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me your comments. You know I don't go too much in depth. I don't open the thing. Plus, if you go on the SPL uh, website, they have dozens of videos and technical aspects, so no, no need to go in depth here. Thank you again for watching, and remember, music is born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.